Right, before we get into the main video, little PSA, please watch Epic Math Time's new video on manifolds. He was working on it for the last five months or so and it turned out so extremely nice. Link will be everywhere, info box, description, etc. Also, um, after my extremely cursed Discord server, there now comes my extremely cursed Instagram and Twitter account. Um, it just exploded overnight and yeah, you should take a look at it. It's, it's pretty freaking cursed. So yeah, PSA done. Now for the main video. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. We are going to do Bad mathematics done wrong, gone right yet again. And today we are going to once again execute a logarithm rule incorrectly, both here. Log of x plus minus y is equal to log of x plus minus log of y. Okay, those are the two cases we have to consider them separately. And for the first one, it's going to be kind of trivial. For the next one, for the second one, it's going to be pretty exciting yet again. So watch till the end, all right? Be because the solution here is pretty spicy yet again. And we're going to take a look at the graph and whatsoever yet again. Do those false logarithm rules are really interesting in my opinion. This is why I just love to cover them here on this channel. We are going to dive right in now. Okay, log of x plus y equals to log of x plus log of y. We are going to make use of exponentiation on both sides. We are going to use base e on both sides. Okay, so if we have e to the a plus b, that's the same as e to the a times e to the b. Okay, so this is the same as e to the log of x times e to the log of y. And if we use this, our logarithms are going to cancel out with the e's, leaving us overall with the simple equation x plus y being equal to x y. And well, now we can easily solve for x or y, <laughs> respectively, if you don't know where this y comes from. Um, recently, I watched everything of Ozarks with my y. <laughs> and yeah, just uh, just the accent they have is, is so amazing. Oh, Ozarks is, is the best Netflix series ever. It's so amazing. Never mind. So x plus y equals to x y is going to be equal to. So um, we are going to solve for one variable. Let us bring the y to the other side. So negative y and let's subtract x y on both sides. Meaning we are going to get x minus x y. We have x as a common factor is equal to x times one minus y is equal to, well, negative y. And if we now divide both sides by 1 minus y, <laughs> we are going to end up with x being equal to, okay, we have negative y over 1 minus y. Let's distribute negative sign into the denominator, leaving us with y over y minus 1. And here's one case that you need to take into consideration. If you divide both sides by um, 1 minus y, 1 is not a solution to our problem here. Okay, now we can plug in numbers, for example, let's say um, for y being equal to 2, um, let's say y being equal to 3. I don't know, we are going to get that x is nothing but 3 over 3 minus 1 is 2, so 3 over 2. We are going to plug it into our equation, leaving us with log of 3 over 2 plus 3 is going to be, okay, we are going to collect terms is log of, and then we are going to have, um, this is 3 over 2, exactly, we had 3. All right, this is going to give us 6, this is 9 over 2, so 3 squared over 2. Okay, um, I hope you see what I did here, just brought those together. Now we can use the logarithm rules, leaving us with um, log of 3 squared is 2 times log of 3 minus log of 2. And if we were to plug this information into here with the plus sign in between, then we would get log of 3 over 2 plus log of 3. Log of 3 over 2 is log of 3 minus log of 2, leaving us with 2 log of 3 minus log of 2. And thus we are done with the first part infinitely many solutions here. Um, y and x cannot be equal to zero. They can also not be negative numbers in the sense that we want to have real solutions. So yeah, 
here you go. Those are your solutions. And now we are going, um, no, both cannot be equal to negative numbers. No, I don't think so. Maybe you can look more into this. I haven't thought about this. I only thought for the solutions um, x or y being greater or equal to one. Now we are going to dive right in with the second one. And once again, we are going to use e on both sides, base e, leaving us with x minus y being equal to, and this is going to give us, um, okay, if we use the logarithm rules here, we are going to have log of x over y. And if we use base e on both sides, we are going to have x over y. I hope you can see where this came from. And now we can solve a quadratic equation just like with the last time. So meaning we are going to get two branches yet again of a third in some way. This is the exciting part here. Now we are going to multiply both sides by y under the condition that it's not equal to zero. It can be equal to zero otherwise everything would diverge, also in the original problem, meaning we are going to get x y minus y squared is equal to x. And now we can uh, bring everything on the one side and on the other side we are going to have zero, leaving us with y squared minus x y plus x is equal to zero. And now we are going to solve a quadratic, meaning we are going to get two solutions, two branches yet again, where one and two is equal to, okay, we are going to get a factor of one half in the front, and then we are going to have, okay, negative, negative becomes positive, x plus minus square root of, okay, this is going to give us x squared over four, meaning just x squared. We are going to expand this fraction by four over four, giving us negative four x. And this is basically it. Those are our two solutions. Now we can look into what solutions we can actually have. We are only looking for real solutions yet again, all right? This is what I'm striving for here in those videos. Um, if we plug in zero, this doesn't work. Zero is undefined because it would diverge here in this case. This is not something that we want. Other than that, for real solutions, we need our third, so our the discriminant here, to be um, greater or equal to zero, meaning um, x squared minus 4x must be greater or equal to zero. If this were equal to zero, then the only solution to this being equal to zero is going to be for x being equal to zero at first. Okay, D um, this is one of the two solutions, I'm terribly sorry. One of the two solutions is x being equal to zero. If x were equal to zero, then this is zero, plus minus zero is going to be zero. So x and y being equal to zero is in the set of solutions. So this is not something that you want. Other than that, we can solve here a tiny little bit. This means um, x squared is greater or equal to four x. And now we can take a look at the other solutions that we can probably get. So all the other solutions are, if we exclude zero here, we can basically just get rid of this factor right here of this x factor, and then we have x being greater or equal to four. This is something that does work out. x being greater or equal to four is something that does work out because for example, if we plug in four, then we are going to get 16 minus 16, square root of zero is zero, so we are going to get two. This is a really trivial solution here. This is a pair of solutions that we are going to get, namely the tuple, um, yes, four and two. This is one solution that we are going to get. But there's one other set of solutions, namely what were to happen if our x is strictly less than zero. I hope you can see why this is one of the solutions that could happen because um, if we plug in negative one, for example, negative one, so you can also conclude this from, from up here. If we plug in negative one, then we are going to get um, one minus minus four basically is positive four square root of five and then we are going to get um, a resolution out on this side so for resolutions we only need our third to be um, defined in the real basically our discriminant and this is the other set of solutions that we are going to get meaning if we were to draw this into a coordinate system we have Zero really doesn't work out, but we have two thirds, meaning they are going to come together in zero yet again. We had this, this situation last time around, so I'm going to mark zero for now, zero, zero. And another point that we are going to have, where in the trivial solution everything comes together is four and two, because it works for the positive and the negative branches. So four and two, let's say this is right here. And once again, we are going to get kind of something like this. 
Okay, just a little bit more round. And that's what we are going to take a look at now in Desmos. So once again, it's sexy Desmos time and I have spoiled pretty much what the thing is going to look like our craft, but I still want to show you the really nice plot using Desmos here. And at first we are going to take a look at the positive branch and you might have guessed already once I activate it that it's going to start from 0, 0. This is where I marked the point and also from 4, 2. This is what we have found out. 0, 0 and the original logarithm equation is not a solution. This is just because the logarithm of zero is basically um, negative infinity. It's going to diverge. But obviously for the quadratic that we have modified everything into, it's going to be a solution. But for our original problem not. This is why we are just going to use this as a point of reference to actually connect our two branches of our, well, of our square root. And once we activate the second branch of the square root, you are going to notice that we are having a hyperbola yet again, which is so cool. This is why I love covering those here on this channel, just because we are playing around with false logarithm rules and then hyperbolas are going to fall from the sky, which is really, really cool. And now I'm leaving it up to you to play around with the abscissas and everything. Just calculate those linear functions, basically connecting our um, our lines going to infinity and negative infinity respectively here on the positive and branch, uh, negative branches um, basically pairwise. Um, I can find the right English word right now. That's why I try to describe it for you a tiny little bit. Other than that, this right here is my Twitter account. It's absolutely cancerous. As you might notice, um, this one is the worst yet. F equals to A times M and same thing happens on my Instagram account. So subscribe to those if you want and I'm giving everything back to Papa Flemmy. Ciao. And this basically concludes the video yet again. I hope you did like this little uh, two part thing today. Um, yeah. I had a bit of thinking to do because this right here is not really obvious at first sight, this x being less than zero as a solution. But if you think about it, it does work. And it basically also follows from taking the square root here in some way. So yeah, just as a little side note. Or you can um, basically solve this thing right here using um, completing the square. And then you can also solve for the valid solutions at this point. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't like, subscribe, like, comment on the channel. If you like, don't forget to uh, check out the shop and the engineering clock is still available for one more month. Other than that, well, trivial merch and all the other merch, also the new arithmetic and the snack merch is available now at the shop. And I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Ciao.